That not only makes it the world's newest, fastest production car at 430 kilometers per hour, but the first to hit those top speeds faster than a Formula One car. There will only be 24 ever made, so if you're a big spender, prepare to spend a massive $1.6 million on one of these bad boys. Coming up, she's been compared to Einstein and Hawking, but she's blazing a trail all her own. Sabrina Pasterski is here after the break. Tomorrow on Daily Planet, the never-ending paint job that is the Golden Gate Bridge. That's tomorrow. Today is International Women's Day, and while we are firm believers here at Daily Planet that women are key figures in the science and tech world the other 364 days a year, we still thought we'd take today to honor one of our favorites. I'm more interested in, in the process of figuring it out. I don't know exactly what problem I will or will not end up solving, or what exactly uh, I'll end up working on in a couple of years, but I do know that I like doing this type of thing and I know that the fun thing about physics is that you don't know exactly what you're going to do and normally things just change very quickly, kind of irreversibly, if they're really right. And that's kind of exciting. It's a bit of an unknown. I'm Sabrina gonzalez Pesterski, and I'm a graduate student in theoretical physics at Harvard. Okay, technically, yes, she is a grad student, but she's also so much more. This is the woman that Harvard has dubbed the next Einstein. Oh, and did we mention she's endearingly modest? But great minds like this don't just appear out of thin air. My family would always fix things around the house rather than like hire people to do it. So we always were a bit hands-on and it was good to learn from like what the people around you know. That kind of attitude that you can fix something, you can build something. Like I did fine in school, but I also like building things and so like kind of the technical side of stuff. Like I never was that super great at like memorizing things. So what I loved about physics or mathematics is that you're, like, if you don't know something, you can figure it out. So you can have the wrong answer, but then realize why you're wrong and make it right. Uh, rather than if you forget a date or, or just don't know some facts, things go just plain wrong uh, very quickly. When she was 14, she constructed her own single engine plane by herself. So I started being interested in aviation, and when I was younger, I wanted to build spacecraft. And so, so I started taking flying lessons. I was fortunate that I was able to do that. I had read about like a young pilot, and he ended up flight training in Canada. And I wrote like an essay about how cool he was and how he inspired me to go start like flight training in Canada, so I could solo a part of craft at 14 instead of at 16 in the U.S. After two years of hard work, she flew it across Lake Michigan, and all this before going to college. Sabrina started off her post-secondary education at MIT, where she was actually waitlisted. That is until professors saw her video of building and flying her plane. That's where she graduated as the first female student ever to receive the Physics Orlap Scholarship. And oh yeah, she graduated with a 5.0 average. Apparently that's even possible. In undergrad we had um, like a basic biology course, a chemistry course, and physics course we had to take. And uh, I guess physics took me in the sense that I did, a, like, I, you know, I, I try hard in all the courses and I, it just came more naturally to me. So it was kind of a, like a feedback loop where you like it and then it likes you and so you keep doing it. Currently, she's working on her PhD in theoretical physics, studying easy breezy stuff like black holes, gravitational force, and the nature of space time. And what inspires me sometimes is thinking about, you never feel like you know a lot. Um, you always feel like you don't know very much at all. But you do feel more and more that in the past you didn't know very much, uh, even more. So somehow like the gradual progression and keeping like in mind that you were worse before and you're getting better, like to, to motivate yourself as like the day to day, that looks good. And like the excitement that comes with figuring things out is a good motivator. Oh, and one last thing. Stephen Hawking, yes, that Stephen Hawking, cites her work in his research. I'm very fortunate that people want to hear what I have to say. There's a sense in which you can do more and you're impressed by things that you did in the past, but you realize that you didn't know what you were doing. And, and so it's kind of, you take a step back and you realize, I'd rather know what I'm doing and do something better in the future than think that what I did in the past was so great.
With that, our time is almost up. But before we go, let's see what we have in store for the last day of Gigantic Week. Yeah, it's a good one. We're heading off to a gigantic bridge, but not just any bridge. The iconic Golden Gate Bridge is the gateway between San Francisco and Oakland for thousands of travelers every day. But we're going behind the scenes with a maintenance crew that keeps it safe and looking good. One worker calls painting the Golden Gate Bridge a never-ending job. Now, the bridge is made of steel, so it needs to be protected by paint so that it won't rust. This is a job where you cannot be afraid of heights. No kidding. This thing is hundreds of meters above the bay. I wonder if they ever think of just changing the color. Uh, I don't think so. See you for that and a whole lot more tomorrow.